Hello and a warm welcome to the Mission Junya podcast. And here as always your host Girish Shivakumar. We just celebrated the 50th anniversary of the World Earth Day this past week on 22nd of April. A series of posts was featured on the social media pages of Mission Junya. So in case you have missed that, do follow Mission Junya on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. The handle is at Mission Junya. In recent weeks and months we definitely can't miss the big story of the covid-19 outbreak. So let's support the government, health and all other supporting agencies to win over this. Wherever you are, do follow the local guidelines and stay safe. The global covid-19 outbreak has definitely had a big impact across the global economy and the clean tech sector is definitely not immune to it. However, the situation has given us an opportunity an opportunity to take a pause and reflect upon the various activities from around the world so in the next few episodes you'll as always hear interesting stories but the focus will be around the clean tech transition during the times of covid-19 so the series begins with a look at the solar rooftop space in india the demand for solar rooftop systems picked up in the last few years especially in the residential and industrial sectors in india So the last few years also saw an emergence of startups many startups came up in the space so the big question will be who will win and who will survive when the situation returns to normal the uncertain times throws up a range of questions will there be a demand and customer interest for solar especially considering what happens when the dust settles on the covid storm and during the lockdown and during the downtime what are the entrepreneurs doing to prepare for the battle ahead So to discuss this and more we have not one but two guests on the show today. Well you will hear more about their work during the chat. But a quick note about both of them. First Harsha Kuntur, he is the founder and managing director of EcoSearch, a company offering solar rooftop solutions based out of Bengaluru in, in India. The company has designed and installed multiple solar rooftop projects in the residential and industrial clusters. across various locations in southern india also joining me in the conversation is the founder and ceo of sunwest capital sishir garamela sunwest capital is a non banking financial company and nbfc it is focused on providing access to capital for the solar rooftop projects across india and sishir is based in the indian city of mumbai the financial capital of india Both Sushir and Harsha have about a decade of experience each in building solar power projects in various capacities in their career. And I am very lucky to have known them for quite a few years now. So when I did have this conversation I really enjoyed it. So without further ado let's dive into the conversation but before that just a quick note. You'll hear the names of the utility and the electricity regulator during the chat. So it is a reference to the state of Karnataka in India and the capital city of Bengaluru. So let's dive in. Hello Harsha and Sushir welcome to the Mission Shunya podcast. So let's begin by getting to know you better. For the listeners can you give us your brief background? Uh hi uh Girish thanks for uh, having us here. It's a pleasure to actually uh, to talk to in the podcast and this is my first podcast that I'm doing. So um uh, I am actually from a company called EcoSource Solar. We uh we actually are into solar rooftop business primarily focused in Bangalore and we have done projects in and around in Karnataka and few in Tamil Nadu. Uh and our company is called Incubator from Aruvil Pondicherry. So that's a brief about us. Uh, probably I can talk more about during the discussion. Sushir? Yeah, thanks uh Uh, Girish for having us here uh, Harsha and I also go back a long way so good to have him on the podcast as well uh, yeah I'm Sushil Garamela I'm the founder and CEO of Sunwest Capital uh, we are a company that is uh, perhaps India's first dedicated uh, financier for rooftop solar uh, our mission is to try and make solar possible for every home and every business in India and uh, you know over the last few years we've uh, moved away from a business model of installing finance to uh, installing solar to financing solar so in the last uh, sort of uh, maybe last 5 years we were first an installation company with projects all across the country but over the last one one and a half year we focused purely on financing and we are working uh, in very specific geographies and one of them happens to be your city of bangalore 
thanks harsha and sushir and uh, of course for all the listeners i've known i've known both of them for quite some time right from when i started in the clean tech space and uh, they are really interesting people to know and uh, they are really passionate with what they do and the reason that i wanted to have them on this podcast is because no matter where you are the covid-19 situation is definitely having an impact in whatever you do and clean tech space is no different and being entrepreneurs in clean tech space the challenges are even more different so in general entrepreneurs generally face challenges right from the word go but in under the current scenario how does the challenge look like harsha what's your take no that's a whole thing with uh, the current situation right uh, you know it it has brought us new challenges of course something that we have never seen before or anticipated there was always challenge about regular markets whether they're going up or not now unfortunately this has brought the entire market down uh, so for us as a clean tech space and especially solar rooftop uh, we feel that next coming two quarters are going to be little challenging for us uh, especially because a lot of people won't be spending uh, their money on you know on something they find to be Uh, which can they can postpone uh, to the future uh, time um having said that you know we also see uh, uh, i specifically see a lot of positivities win so- solar space uh, especially indian government has been central ministry has been really pushing hard and supporting a lot in the clean tech space so especially solar rooftop and uh, and uh, solar itself i was in a call with in a, one of the webinars with mnre and what i came to know is that they have not stopped any of their uh, bidding for uh, rooftop uh, big, uh, not rooftop but uh, solar in general this year i believe they have done for 34 uh, gigawatts of biddings have already been done which actually is encouraging because industry is not going to die you know maybe there will be some companies that could go down or go up or can wait or sustain for some some time but overall uh, the market space looks encouraging because you know the government is not backing out from the uh, from this area and the question is some of these companies including us how we take take up the the work define us you know whether we would sustain for long a uh, few things uh, and i think uh, we, which we can discuss uh, later on but overall the market uh, segment i i see it as positive in long run Uh, there's going to be short, in short run there's going to be a, a problem you know uh, for two quarters at least you know that that's something that we are all prepared for sushir what's your take on the covid-19 situation and uh, what what do you see as the potential impact you know in the short term i believe that uh, while solar is a great asset uh, for anyone to have i think uh, it is a highly discretionary investment either residential or sme so i do believe that given uh, the high discretionary nature of the uh, asset class and given that it's still fairly nascent in india uh, i am a bit concerned about how the demand will pick up uh, for this particular segment over the next um, maybe 6 months to 9 months however the flip side is that i think covid has taught us that you know we need to start focusing very actively on self sufficiency and sustainability and sustainable living i think one of the fallouts that might come and a positive spillover would be that people will take renewable energy and clean tech very seriously this is my gut feeling and if that happens then uh, maybe uh, medium to long term uh, this could maybe a blessing for us to rise up to the occasion and take uh, this as a challenge and a and a wake up call that we need to do something both for the environment as well as for the pocket but in the short term i do see stress i see stress on the demand side and i also as harsha mentioned uh, see uh, stress on how many companies will be able to last this crisis because as you're aware that you know the industry is full of very small players uh, you know the number of players uh, in the downstream market uh, you know which is installers and distributors and all of those uh, you know system integrators uh, ones that are between Uh, one to 50 employees that that size uh, there are many many companies like that and uh, those are the companies that will be very hard, very hit really hard so it will uh, be a test of resilience to see who's going to push out of this and come out of this but uh, i think i think the story in the long term still stays uh, 
you know, the, the sun's still shining, uh, the factories will come back running, electricity will be saved. So I'm not worried about the long term or the medium term story, but in the short term, we all have to really focus on survival. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think one of the things, uh, Sushil, is also, you know, the the funding availability, right? I mean, you know, this is one of a major challenge for some of the projects to take off. Many of the our customers who whom we were talking and we almost closed orders, they, you know, at the time, even before the shutdown, right? I mean, we're just on the verge of closing the order. The cu- customer said, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'll survive myself and I have to hold my money for some time. So he actually said, we'll wait and watch the situation and uh, uh, see whether, you know, if, if things work out, we'll go for it. It's a fairly big project. And I think that availability of funds and I think also the government is pushing, uh, you know, the RBI is recently announced that asking all the banks, uh, they reduce the reverse repo rate, uh, you know, assuming that the banks would pump the money back into the market. Uh, we don't know how that's going to play itself, uh, but that's that's a bigger space and that's actually to do with uh, Sishi's uh, turf, you know, the financial sector and uh, we are what we are saying to our customers is if the banks are open and you if the companies have got a long term outlook uh, we are saying you know go for at least with a loan model uh, in a short term you know and so that you can do it the second aspect and one of the things i was saying also why i was a little bit positive is that i just came to know today morning in fact that karnataka state rooftop policy for example had actually expired on march 31st Last year, it took them six months to get a new policy renewed. Today, uh, I spoke with the KRC and I came to know, for example, that they said they have uh, extended the policy, state policy till a new policy comes, which could be probably three to four months later, which is a very good sign because that's actually the government is backing the solar. For me, that was a very positive note uh, for the day, in fact, that government is backing renewables and that's to point with what sushi is saying uh, you know people do understand that renewables is a thing going forward and i think this government fortunately the central government is really pushing all the discoms also to really support and as a matter of fact uh, they have actually made renewable services as the essential services now so people actually can start uh, working doing the operations part of it uh, starting today you know uh, that's interesting to know about the positive side of the policy re- and regulatory side from the Karnataka government. I'm sure like even the Indian government has stressed that um, the targets are not going to be revised and we are going to have the same aggressive targets for 2022 and beyond. So here at this point, I would like to direct this question to you. The last few years, especially in the clean tech space, in the solar space, we did see a lot of financial instruments come into play, be it for the large scale projects or even small scale rooftops for residential or even the commercial and industrial clients. And you you also offer solutions in this space. How do you see this space, like the financial instruments, shape in the next few months? Would you be more conservative? From an underwriting point of view, definitely more conservative. I think uh, you know you have to appreciate that there has been stress and in the in the you know financial statements of many companies, and uh, when that happens, uh, the ones that were just about on the green side now may be looking at you know, being on the red, right? And uh, I think financiers would look at their cases with a lot more in-depth now and, you know, with a lot more uh, rigor. Having said that, I think uh, I agree with Harsha's point of view that, uh, and yours as well, uh, Girish, that uh, if people were to go solar uh, or, or people were to take any cost-cutting initiative like going for renewable energy options, I think there is no better time to provide financial solutions than right now. Uh, If you are going to go for it and uh, you may not uh, want to spend away from your, uh, uh, you know, core capex into some non-core items like solar, then uh, perhaps financing financing solution is the right uh, is the right way. So I think the demand for financial solutions will only increase. I think uh, on at least the financing front, uh, there has been. Uh, less of action over the last uh, few years, especially in the small-scale solar market. I mean, India has seen a lot of OPEX and PPAs for well-rated companies, but, you know, short-term loans and leases are still uh, products which are yet to be tested. The market's not deep. So I think the market's going to pick up 
uh, for that. So that's a positive upside. But everything really stems from uh, the demand side. And the demand is, um, you know, we, we are in an industry where a person would want to go buy solar first. Then they would think whether I can afford it or not, or should I go get a loan, or should I get a OPEX? So first comes the product, the desire for the product, and then comes the willingness to finance it or not. So if the very first thing uh, is there, uh, then perhaps it makes sense to think of the second question. But if the very first demand uh, itself is not there, uh, the interest, and that is something that we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, I'm just taking a little bit of a cautious side because you, know, you don't want to come out of this uh, all guns blazing and trying to install everything and uh, anything possible. But uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how, um, you know, how the consumer behaves and coming out of the COVID. And obviously, every, it's given a lot, a long time for everyone to think of, uh, you know, choices that we've made. And But if, yes, they come out with a big bang demand, then I think the financial services for this space is going to tremendously increase. There's a lot of latent capital sitting there waiting to be deployed. Even people like us, we've uh, taken some time to build up the company in terms of processes and understanding the product and what the customer really wants and how to position that. We're working with installer partners across the country, across the certain cities, such as EcoSearch. So we've got a lot of feedback. And just when we were really about to go, Bango, you know, COVID hit us. <laughs> so uh, while that is unfortunate, I think uh, it's, critical that, uh, it's critical that we brace ourselves for the medium term and how we're going to make a recovery out of this rather than worry about the next six months. Because we all have been in this too long to just really worry only about the next six months. I think Harsha would agree to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'll add one more just positive note, uh, uh, Sishi, to yours. Uh, I mean, to start with, one of the negatives of the COVID is that, you know, a lot of these power producing companies, uh, you know, they may not, uh, uh, or the, uh, the distribution companies may not be able to pay the money to the power producing companies, uh, right? I mean, if the CNI comes down, you know, the intake, which also means that if the demand goes down uh, on the CNI, the problem is today, most of the cross subsidy surcharges that are being paid are subsidies are being paid is by the CNI, so, you know, uh, uh, for the distribution company. Now, if CNI goes down, uh, the ripple effect of that actually is the price of electricity which is a cross subsidy actually would uh, should uh, you know i mean uh, because there's uh, the, the tariff rate should go up to pay uh, for someone else right in this case the agriculture and the domestic uh, customers so th- my expectation is that in short run uh, the price of tariff could fluctuate uh, quite a bit and that is also an impetus uh, i think for companies which are actually sustaining, you know, which have uh, doing well, for example, pharma industry might actually do pretty well uh, in next few months to next few years. Uh, they can, they might actually think immediately to go for solar because they have got the money. They also see the long term the the cost of electricity going up, and one could actually talk talking to these customers to convert and go solar purely on economic reasons, not necessarily even to uh, global warming or climate change, right? I, I think there are uh, spillover effects, uh, you know, that would come out of this. Uh, but the market overall would come down, uh, you know, uh, drastically. So what we do, business might come down, but it may not be a complete zero. You know, we, we might still do some good amount of business. The only reason I'm saying is also the government policies are supporting solar in general and solar rooftop as well, because solar rooftop is one of the worst hit in this segment in the solar. So on the positive note, you know, we would be able to probably close some orders. I need to note the overall market, might, you know, the market share could come down by 20, 30 percent. I mean, you know, from last year to this year. So uh, that's on put positive negatives. That's an interesting perspective, Harsha. And as you rightly said, customers, commercial and industrial customers are generally the ones, especially in India, paying the higher rate for electricity and they kind of cross-subsidize the agricultural demand and the domestic consumers. So with industries kind of not performing at their peak, their consumption could be lower and 
the distribution companies could actually face the wrath and they would not be able to pay their dues for procuring power and on one side this might also reduce the overall consumption of electricity in the entire sector but at the same time as you mentioned some sec- some companies might do well and uh, that could actually in fact create more demand although that quantum of demand might be less compared to what would have been actual in the business as usual scenario now moving back to again the idea of like clean tech entrepreneurs clean tech entrepreneurs are generally the evangelist for the space i mean both of you have been in the space for quite some time and long time in fact and you had to be an evangelist advocating the benefits of solar and talking to customers and educating that and it took a long time because it doesn't come easy uh, educating people doesn't come easy and uh, for them to understand the me- economics of it and the benefits of it takes a long time but now with this scenario do you think all that kind of education and all that kind of prepping up the customer is kind of reset to an extent okay so um not fully though uh, i mean to tell you giri i mean we've been doing webinars and uh, yesterday we did one actually uh, sushi was kind of to actually join the webinar and talk to some of the uh, customers who were interested in going for solar maybe not now but later so uh, the education i mean people are uh, now uh, in terms of the knowledge space and reaching out to people i think that has only the uh, medium of uh, reaching out has changed uh, and then we are able to still reach out to the people uh, but in terms of how many people would be interested would have come down drastically of course you know that uh, that is not there at least uh, you know uh, because we are in the midst of lockdown we are not able to see that uh, you know impact directly now but we are having uh, in the webinars people are attending quite a bit you know we i think we have reached out uh, to almost if i just say around 200 people you know in the webinars in last 3 uh, weeks so shir would you like to add to this yeah girish i think uh, look i think where we where we started was a concept right many years back when we started out there was no net metering in the country there was very little actually in solar at that point of time from there today uh, till today there is obviously a very different i mean everyone at least knows one person who's gone solar and they have good or bad stories but they have some stories right so there is there is some data points there my uh, challenge is are people waking up in the morning and saying uh you know this is a great thing for me and to be to it see all these businesses including ourselves when we make a business continuity plan we look at scenarios and we look at places where we can cut costs i think we've proven time and again through our own businesses in our own ways uh, across the country that uh, going solar is a great way to cut costs and uh, finance it however you want it uh, that's a that's more of a uh, financing topology but reality is that this investment if done for with the right installer and you know with the right equipment and with the right kind of financing it is a, a very good one perhaps uh, arguably one of the best investments that you could make from a purely return perspective economic return perspective right so despite knowing that uh, are we in a place where people are um, you know still sort of coming out and proactively searching for solar in the industrial space i don't think so i think one of the one of the things that you need to think of is that the market that we operate in is um if i were to give you a sense uh, in the msme space we are in the, the micro and the small kind of a space more of a small and perhaps a smaller side of the medium as well so we are not talking about large enterprises here right so the large enterprises have a very strong ecosystem for developers etc but the smaller ones i think solar is still fairly new and people still don't know enough and uh, we've done a lot of industry presentations and we've done a lot of industrial cluster work and a lot of that is ongoing a lot of that is very important but i think there is still a lot of work to be done so from a demand perspective uh, you use the word evangelism i think that evangelism is not over yet i think uh, we've come a long way but uh, and and it's a great place to be right now to for someone new starting out compared to where we were but uh, looking back i would feel that uh, we would have expected more of an uptake by now and uh, if that uptake has still not happened then it is upon us as industry players to sort of go out and uh, get into these clusters and get into these industry associations and play a very strong role in advocating uh, solar and to that extent i think harsha works very closely with kerc and the karnataka local discoms etc i think some of those interventions from local players is also very critical because 
you know when you uh, when the same set of people show up it uh, shows confidence and passion that uh, you know these people are here for the long run and uh, we should listen to them and we should take that uh, uh, you know discussion out to our industry uh, colleagues and tell them about the possibilities so evangelism yes but still a long way to go i think uh, compared to what potential we have and what kind of uh, ambitions we have uh, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot more of evangelism and education that needs to be done and to add to that i think that has to be done in respect of covid situation itself right i think uh, it, it, that we have to do i think for you know for a large number of people just to give you one statistics on the uh, number of rooftops for example uh, in karnataka is 2200 actually not in karnataka but in under bescom right and bescom is a major chunk of rooftop systems in karnataka they have around 2200 systems in the entire bescom you know considering the number of uh, businesses and number of residentials uh, houses that are there in uh, uh, bangalore alone Uh, this number is very very meager so you can understand i mean in terms of uh, as such the awareness is less but i, I think you know pre or post covid i think we, that that uh, evangelism of reaching out i think that has to be done in a long run i mean i think we're talking about next 3 4 years uh, itself yeah i think very early in our journeys we realized that uh, you know for good or for bad reasons we are <laughs> we're trying to build a new category and whenever you try to pioneer something uh, you know it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience obviously there's a, a lot of uh, reward as well if you're successful however it takes a lot of time because behavioral change and shifting mindsets and uh, figuring out the drivers uh, you know we like to believe that environment could be a driver but really it's not you know regardless of how much we speak about climate change eventually for the indian businessman Uh, and and why shouldn't it be right it's about an investment and they're hoping to get a good return on investment on that particular uh, on that particular bet so i think the behavior change the shifting in mindset and uh, adoption of clean energy is something that is something we still talk about very often uh, between our own industry circles to see how we can sort of uh, you know maybe affect policy or uh, advocate this further that's actually an interesting point especially the, the idea of evangelism it has to continue respect of the covid situation or not and as you said like it definitely takes a lot of time to actually have this kind of mindset and behavioral change in the mind of the consumer so it takes time but now if you were to look at the bigger picture look from outside the entire industry last few years did see a lot of startups in the space come up and uh, actually to some players it also set, bought out a lot of price war and the idea that you have to scale up fast to have to do that so do you think if companies were given an opportunity to do something different anticipating some scenario like this would come up would entrepreneurs like you would have taken a different step or made positioned better or do you think clean tech startups in the last few years went overboard in doing some things that they could have actually done it better rather than go to price wars and stuff like that yeah i i think you respect to of post covid you know looking at the covid situation right i think any startup company uh, which is doing in the service industry they should be really looking at doing a fine quality installations with the fine quality equipments and look at the best interest of the customer in long run especially in solar which is there for 25 years and our uh, philosophy has always been that Uh, you know we don't get into the price wars uh, and we would do the best uh, so we lot of times we don't even bid and we never bid it for a government project especially in the rooftop space primarily because you know the quality when you look at 25 years lifespan especially in solar industry i think uh, people who have betted on a price war and gone lower price uh, even though you can't reach out i think those companies would eventually shut their businesses uh, because in a times at times like covid uh, you know you, you are questioned with everything everything right you know your systems uh, your quality everything comes into play uh, you know the systems which are not being maintained they're going to eventually suffer and if you don't have enough bandwidth in your own company to take care of the systems in long run uh, i think uh, you are doomed to fail right i think 
uh, what my take is always that whether it's in clean tech space or you know e-commerce space or anything i think the only companies that could survive always in long run is uh, not the companies that only look at price what price is important but those companies which look at the quality and then you are able to deliver the quality and the at a price that is affordable i think that's a win win for everyone i think going forward i i i actually uh, see that the price war more than the price war i think the quality would come into play many companies do i anticipate that they will close down you know people who don't have enough capital uh, with them uh, liquidity with them and they've been going ex- aggressive on their prices uh, you know that probably uh, you know unfortunately they would probably see on a bad side of uh, covid so sir i think that's a great question i think <clears throat> i've i've spent a lot of time thinking about this and i feel that you know your business what whatever regardless of solar or any of that your business should be unit economics positive scalable and uh, differentiated right these are the three key elements to a successful startup in my opinion obviously helps to have large pools of capital backing you but if it's one of those not one of those three things then you know a, a large amount of capital will also not be able to solve you uh, solve for you you know one of the things that i've noticed is that it's much much harder to scale a service oriented business uh, so uh, to be able to do that let's take an example of starbucks you know uh, you are from uh, the heart of south indian filter coffee <laughs> so you would understand that it's perhaps not the uh, the coffee that itself uh, is uh, unique or differentiated but it's the service levels at starbucks which is unique right and the way they've been able to scale that up the way they were you know economics positive and it's still a brick and mortar business it's not a digital business right i i think what i feel is that these three things will have to be necessary regardless of solar or coffee or any financial services or any other form of business if you're starting out today what i would also like to add is that you know the people who've been around for a while and who are genuinely passionate about this field or want to do something uh, sincerely regardless of whether they will survive past covid or not there is a sense of long termism in the way of the, in the way they think you know to install 300 or 500 projects like eco soch did just in the city of bangalore or around karnataka you know requires a certain amount of discipline and rigor and like that there are many other local companies that have done hyper locally very well what i'm trying to get at is if you have that kind of commitment and discipline and you don't fall for these price wars there is an inherent long termism in your dna of the company which will also be the one that will push you through these problems some way or form you will figure out a way to survive covid and uh, you know if you don't no problem at least when you played you played well but you will come out of this i'm very confident that people who have been around for a while and who understand the the value of unit economics and not falling for that a uh, quick buck or the quick uh, negotiation there for price i think will survive this however the you know the fly by night operators who are opportunistic uh, i think they will make money in the short term uh, they have in the past but i don't know in the long term whether they can really scale their business on you know because there is really no differentiation price cannot be a differentiation for business i think uh, and, and and it's it's regardless of which geography you are in, in india or abroad i think it, it is a fundamental thing that price is not the only thing that people buy there are so many other things that uh, you know go in a deal right and uh, so yeah my my view is that uh, you know sometimes shake ups like these are also important to see that who has the way with all to hang in there which is why i think the mantra today for any startup or anybody including ourselves and i'll be very humble about it is survival if you can survive through covid i think you've done a very good job as a as a company regardless of whether you're a startup or a large organization yeah i agree with you that's a good way to put it i mean respect of covid or not you have your own long term vision and the long term perspective in the industry and what you want to do i think that answers most of the things now before we get to the final part of talking about the bigger picture assuming the current scenario i mean it's actually tough scenario for everyone around you did mention about having webinars talking to people and still continuing the evangelism what are the other things that you're undertaking during this period of lockdown and uh, just to ensure that you position yourselves better when the market opens or want to create the market in the next few months once everything settles back to normal you know we're doing a lot of uh, introspection on what kind of segments that we can 
just evaluating at this stage what kind of segments, what kind of financial products that we could come out with. We know what we don't know. So we know the few areas that we understand and there's the whole world out there that we don't understand and we wouldn't want to venture into that. So in the little domain that we understand uh, within the clean energy space and the financing space, we are trying to see if we could uh, you know, come up, open new segments or new products. And I think some part of time is going there. I think some part of time is also going in planning uh, the business over the next six to nine months and how things are going to look. You know, we're in Mumbai. So physically, we're obviously in also a uh, sort of a red zone here. And some of the logistics challenges also play a key role into how fast you can come back into the market. The third is the financial services space itself will assess this uh, situation differently from, uh, you know, just the solar industry. So being, uh, you know, having one leg in the financial services space and the other in the solar space, I think we'll have to weigh some of those things. So that's really where the where the time is being spent as to, uh, you know, what will come out of COVID and how are we best. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, I think a little bit of rest as well. I think we've, we've done a lot of work over the last so many years. So this is a good amount of, uh, you know, good good downtime to have and reflect on the journey thus far and, uh, you know, be a little fresh for the, the war that's ahead or, or the work that's ahead. Well, uh, I definitely take that point. Because like a lot of people have in fact told me that, uh, I mean, this is the longest time as anyone has stayed in at home. I mean, stayed in one city. So I think that's true for most of the entrepreneurs like uh, both of you. So Harsha, what what are you doing now? Yeah, no, I'll start with the same thing what Sishir uh, mentioned nicely. You know, introspection and, you know, really be able to look at what we have done and what we could do and where we could make an impact. Of course, that's being done. You know, that's a primarily important point. Uh, uh, at in terms of uh, at the company level, a few things. Uh, you know, uh, what I call as optimization of the resources. Uh, you know, so far things have been okay, and you know, people can come meet each other at office. You travel to meet a client. You know, take three hours to go there in Bangalore sometimes, two hours to go there, and then come back. A, pretty much your day is gone, right? So thanks to the technology, I mean, you know, uh, post-COVID, I think that's something, if this same thing has happened 10 years ago, uh, probably we won't have been in the same situation. But now that it has happened, technology is available for us to use and to make contacts with the customers. Uh, You know, we are trying to really uh, optimize on, you know, going to an extent uh, to even quote the customer even without even ever stepping into their premises. So so optimizing of, uh, uh, you know, on the sales part, right? Then internally also, you know, a lot of things, people in the service industry would take it lightly with, you know, putting things in Excel, or writing on the chalkboard. Again, you know, we, we are completely gone to systems now. Uh, everything, all our processes, uh, we moved into systems so people literally tomorrow we don't need to work from office at all i mean we are completely could go office less except for our logistics and uh, you know getting the materials onto the site so a lot of that work has been done uh, which is a very good thing and it's always been my play to get that happening uh, fast enough in our office thanks to covid i mean we could really look back and then do those changes uh, in a much faster way the second is literally uh, adapting to the changing scenarios. We have no idea. I mean, you know, for all that optimism that I have, I still don't know how the, you know, if COVID does continue, the lockdown does continue post May, how are things going to be? You know, how, how, how are the fallouts going to be You know, after two months of lockdown? And would it, you know, still we don't see any uh, anticipation of vaccine coming in and, we still live in this uh, a world, uh, you know, where everyone is uh, afraid of uh, con- any contact. Uh, so how does that work out and what are the businesses that could come out of it? So a lot of uh, new business ideas the teams have come up with and, you know, either it could be reaching out to the new customer segment, as Sishi was saying, uh, our new product segment itself, you know, launch onto it, something totally different that we have not done. But also look at uh, health and hygienic uh, part, 
how does that play into clean tech space uh, right and you know again uh, there could be some uh, new ideas that could come out of that so there's a lot of thought process is going into that direction as well the third but not the least uh, this is a time that we are really actively working with you know reaching out to more partners the point is you know i don't think echo search by itself or any startup uh, can do all these build things you know post covid i mean you know we we are in new normal and in new normal now we need to also look at how you collaborate uh, with different companies uh, different spaces in sometimes even the same solar companies right uh, maybe in a different geographical locations how do you partner up with them and do certain things of sharing your resources uh, between them but doing at a much more uh, optimal level which i was saying the first point or optimizing your resources i think uh, these three are continuously happening with us i mean this is something uh, i i don't think we'll stop we've started it uh, we've always been looking for good partners i think we're going to go all out on the uh, building our the partners and the business side as well as in the co- consumer side uh, you know uh, so that's this three are uh, very much happening the last one uh of course you know as a company we want to cut down our discretionary expenses uh you know uh, i think that's uh, unf- you know we got to do this you know it's a best time uh, that we could cut down expenses and hopefully we can uh, do a better service at a lower cost to help the end customers you know so that you know you're setting a new baseline for everything i think solar would also get a new baselines you know uh, your installation costs the material costs Uh, that's another uh, point is that you know the the uh, the, the supply uh, demand is going to come down so you also know that the component cost would come down so we, there's a lot of work has to be done in that really looking at our cost now how we uh, place ourselves in the market so um, broadly i mean these are the three things uh, girish that we are uh, you know more or less we are working on those are really interesting harsha especially the final point on working about around the system and what you're doing to re- see that ensure like you better optimize the cost and offer better services leads me perfectly to my final question which i had in mind for the bigger opportunity to collaborate not just amongst partners but as an industry as a clean tech industry i mean crisis brings out the best in people because entrepreneurs by themselves are really smart people but uh, they wouldn't have found time to collaborate and have a better representation Sushir brought this topic uh, briefly for an earlier question, but uh, do you think something like that coming up? Where what can be done? Like how if startups, clean tech entrepreneurs come together, what can you do better to make sure the new norm that the COVID throws up uh, is actually better and uh, is actually more beneficial to everyone involved? You don't get into price wars, but you have more market and you have a better ecosystem to play in. So, what can the industry do? in such a scenario and what's happening on ground sushir yeah, i think i mean free market right everyone gets to compete and uh, i think we can uh, talk about all these good things but there will be people who um, you know price wars would be there and even in the future as well i i do feel my learning from observing financial services industry uh, you know and looking at those parallels in solar is that uh, and and this is largely because uh, solar is still a very new kind of a industry in india uh, small scale solar especially but i think in financial services the industry is so large and deep that within the value chain everybody knows what roles they play and what their strengths are and they stay in that zone uh, rather than wanting to do everything i think solar to that extent i have seen people would want to uh, you know try to do everything across the value chain and hence we build many companies that are alike as opposed to collaboration and we compete rather than collaborate Uh, having said that uh, you know if you're in this uh, game you're probably ambitious so how much do you want to really uh, work with others and how much do you want to do for yourself all of that aside i think that's human nature but i think uh, definitely one of the things that i think of is that one of my old uh, industry colleagues within this i mean in the same field as ours uh, another install installation company in mumbai their founder had told me a while back that we should open some sort of a small scale solar industrial association for policy advocacy and you know uh, now i look back at that thought and i feel that uh, it would have been a perfect time for us to have 
more people like Harsha and myself talk about this, put it on a charter or put it, you know, put this on a piece of paper and go to the government as a, a government or the regulators or whoever is in the position of power and represent an industry, right? If you look at um, the, representation, the representations that we have at the moment are largely either the big developers or the large CNI players. There is really nobody in the small CNI market. Uh, I agree that uh, dollar to dollar, this market is still not very deep. Uh, but you would have to give us the fact that the number of people that we employ, you know, lots of companies, few employees, but lots of come on per, per company, but lots of companies. Uh, and 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 so that is, uh, there is a lot of good deed that's being done. So representation is very critical. And uh, perhaps now I feel uh, looking back that those steps have to be taken so that next time, um, you know, we are hit, God forbid, not any time soon or never, but if we are hit with something like this, then at least we have an industry body that can stand up for us or we can stand up for ourselves. So apart from that, I think we're still brainstorming as to how we can collaborate more. Uh, but definitely, I think moving to tech, moving to digital, uh, anybody who's willing to enter the space, I would say, please keep your services as asset light as possible. And solar is largely, for that matter, clean energy. The last mile is very brick and mortar. But if there is anything in the middle that has a technology aspect that you can cover up you know, through your uh, discovery or uh, innovative uh, ideas, then, then focus on that because scalability is very critical and the market is very big. So that's really my thoughts on uh, collaboration, competition and coming together in the time of crisis. Uh, I, I agree with you. And I think uh, the one point that Sushi brought it is that having a representation, right? I mean, that brings along... The, your own ecosystem, you know, within that space, the little ecosystem that you have, maybe it could be the rooftop, small, uh, you know, CNI and uh, stuff. You know, I think having that tribe, uh, you, you can call, which could actually helping each other at a time of crisis is very, very important. And I think going forward, you would, in fact, you would see your uh, companies, you know, uh, other companies are, including our company, there could be services that we might actually need help from other ones because we are not able to cater to that particular client in that loca locality. And it's very important to build those partnerships to be able to do it and also represent at a broader scale what we do. And I think, uh, especially the crisis always brings the companies together, you know, I, 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 and the people together. I think that's, I think that's going to be the norm. I, you know, I really hope that many companies can work uh, rather than compete. Com competition is good for the market. That's the market to decide. But at a human level, uh, you know, as an aggregate, if you see it's only when each of us help together, uh, the, the market in long run would sustain. The again, valuable points from both, both of you. And by looking at this from a neutral point of view, like, what I'm doing. I mean, I'm at least happy that uh, entrepreneurs and people like you are really at least interested to come out and talk about this. I mean, COVID-19 has been the biggest crisis that we, we could actually see in our lifetimes. But the big point of, I mean, it's tough for everyone. It's tough for entrepreneurs, especially. But coming out of this and talking about it is definitely something, a positive sign in itself. So thanks for that. Any final thoughts from your end? Um, I, I would say, I mean, very simply, you know, all these businesses, you know, being an entrepreneur, all these are secondary, you know, when it actually comes to your health and health of your family, health of your society and the country. And I think, uh, I think that's very uh, foremost important. All of us has to keep ourselves healthy, safe uh, during this time and also be optimistic. COVID is not the only one which has happened to our world. It's not the only thing that could ever come. You know, there will be future COVIDs also. And there were COVIDs in the past. But every time human spirit has always uh, won, we always went past this. I think this is one of those things. And I, I am optimistic that we would uh, definitely come out of it. Short run, yes, we do need to make sacrifices. But that's okay. You know, uh, you know, we all are in it. So uh, I think uh, my final say is uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Sushir? Yeah, I mean, I agree with uh, Harsha. I think, uh, you know, 
uh, it's it's clear to us that uh, platforms like yourself, you're doing a great job with your podcast, and these are I, I think we need to do more like things like these, and probably be have more podcasts and get people more together, especially at this time, uh, hear each other's perspective, because I think relationships and uh, health and you know the there are a lot more fundamental things than just business and business is important and it's critical but uh, you know uh, some of those other things are uh, very very uh, crucial to a great uh, quality of life and uh, i think uh, to me uh, this is uh, catching up with two old friends and uh, i know you for a very long time the both of you i know the kind of passion you have for the space and uh, you know we reciprocate that uh, so overall i think it's a very good feeling to be here so thank you very much uh, girish for having uh, harsha and me here i can speak on his behalf as well uh, and and look forward to uh, you know doing more th- more of these uh, and and perhaps uh, you know i will end also saying the same thing that harsha said that you know stay safe be positive and keep the faith because uh, you know the only thing that matters at the end is uh, belief well thanks for summing it up well sishir and uh, yeah it's been an absolute pleasure to have known both of you for for quite some time and uh, really happy i mean just like a, a normal time i just called both of you and i said like what do you think of the current scenario and uh, glad that it's ended up on being a podcast episode as well uh, so yeah I, i'll try to do my best try to get more people and more conversations happening at least the best is that we get different perspectives and uh, talk about the challenges that we face and uh, and ultimately like as you have both previously said i mean crisis is temporary but uh, the human spirit is permanent and i'm sure we'll win over this so thanks again for taking time to do this and i appreciate your time thanks girish thanks uh, girish you know thank you for the opportunity and absolutely rightly i mean this is incredible what you're doing and your work uh, i think bringing the different perspectives from the across various industries and across the clean tech space i think something that we all need Thanks again for you know it was a wonderful uh, conversation yeah thanks sir sir so i hope you enjoy the conversation as much as i did in recording it well it felt like a good casual chat but with deeper insights with two experts in the space i would definitely encourage you to strengthen your relationships with friends and industry colleagues during these times it definitely throws up a lot of interesting ideas One thing is quite clear from the conversation as Sushir and Harsha mentioned there is definitely optimism in the entrepreneur's mind when it comes to the state of solar rooftop projects especially in the medium and long term but of course there is no hiding the fact that in the short term it's definitely going to be on a survival mode it is also quite clear that entrepreneurs who are in the game for the long term like Harsha and Sushir they are definitely using this time to evaluate new ideas and are also looking for avenues to collaborate with potential partners so post covid 19 i can definitely sense that there will be even more collaboration between entrepreneurs and companies not just in india but across the world so as the saying goes crisis will bring people together in this case clean tech entrepreneurs and companies together to know more about harsha and his work you can check the website of ecosoch that is ecosoch.com e c o s o c h and to connect with sushir you can visit the website of sunwest capital that is sunwestcapital.com of course the links are in the show notes section of the podcast so do check them out and the action item just like in the last few episodes is quite simple stay home stay safe during this time two weeks from now we'll have another conversation another story and related to the current situation around covid-19 so it will be with another special guest so please do subscribe and get notified when the podcast is out and if you have been following mission shunya why not spread the word it just takes 30 seconds to share the episode to three people in your network so please consider doing that so with that signing off this is mission shunya towards a zero carbon economy